Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock have a ton of differences, so in this video I'll show the 20 most interesting ones. The first big difference between Minecraft Bedrock and Java, which I do find to be incredibly interesting, is the fact that the coral fans only have one fan inside of Bedrock. Now you may wonder what that means if you've only seen one type of fan or the other. There's two of these 2D texture planes that we have of the coral fan when it's on the side of a block. When it's on the top, it looks almost the exact same between Bedrock and Java but on the side we only have one of these and although I'm not sure why it does mean that at certain angles the fan is basically invisible but there's another difference between the fans in Bedrock and Java and that's the fact that when you place a fan outside of the water it instantly dies this is not what happens with the blocks in either Bedrock or Java and this is not how the fans work in Java either but the fans inside of Bedrock Edition when placed down will just instantly shrivel up and die like this and so that actually means that you could break and replace these fans instantly with them all dying like that. The next difference between Minecraft Java Edition and Minecraft Bedrock Edition isn't really in Bedrock Edition at all, and that's the fact that there is no F3 as well as no F3 commands inside of Bedrock. This is something that really does affect players quite a bit between both versions, as for instance if you want to see your coordinates inside of Bedrock you have to always have them up, although yes of course you can go to your settings, and then you can go to the game settings and turn on and off show coordinates without any issue whether if you're in survival or not in survival of course you can turn these on and off but still that's just a fraction of the data that you get inside of java with things like biome information chunk borders hit boxes advanced tool tips and many many more of things with f3 commands and the f3 screen understanding the specific and technical aspects of minecraft is so much easier in java the impaling enchantment is incredibly different across Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock. So inside of Minecraft Java, the only thing that impaling helps is to give you more damage on aquatic mobs. However, inside of Bedrock Edition, and apparently planned to be in the future of Java Edition, impaling works on anything that is in the water. And this is a massive change, as of course things like, let's say, drowns are now much more easy to kill. But as well as that, let's say you're fighting some mobs and they end up inside of the water, you could simply hit them with your trident, and you can basically one-hit kill any mob that isn't super powerful when it's underwater. Which I think is pretty crazy considering the fact that you would usually need a high level enchanted weapon, like let's say a really good sword, to be able to do this. Also as a crazy bonus, this enchantment works just as well if it's raining. Inside of Java, boats are crafted like this, basically a short U shape made out of planks, but in Bedrock that doesn't give you a boat. So how do you craft them in this version? Well you need a shovel. This actually makes a lot of sense, as the texture for the oak boat and the texture for what used to be all the different boats contained a shovel in them, you can see that very visually there, that there totally is a shovel item in this boat, as of course you need an oar to be able to paddle your boat, and so I think it's kind of cool that the wooden shovel doubles as an oar in Minecraft, and although it's admittedly pretty annoying to have to craft shovels to make boats inside of Minecraft Bedrock Edition, I do think it's something that's much more realistic than not needing an oar to make a boat. So although I'm nowhere near sure if I would want this in Minecraft Java or not, I do think it's an incredibly interesting feature. If you are in creative mode in Minecraft Minecraft Bedrock Edition you have a curious ability and that's the fact to be able to die shulkers. That's right and I'm not talking about shulker boxes I'm talking about shulker mobs. So if you go next to one of these mobs and you right click on them with one of these items of the die they'll change into that color. You can have cyan shulkers, lime shulkers, blue shulkers and of course their colors would correspond to different shulker boxes. You can even re-dye these to different colors. So in Minecraft Java Edition if you have a looting three sword you can still never get more than one shulker shell per shulker, and it's still not even a guaranteed chance of a singular shell. Whereas in Bedrock Edition, if you have looting three and you kill a shulker with that looting three, you have a chance of getting an absolutely massive amount of shulker shells, with the chances being zero to four. There's actually an entire type of block that is only able to be obtained inside of Bedrock, or at least in survival, and that's the path block. Now in Minecraft Java, no matter what you break a path block with, it will just break into dirt. But in Minecraft Bedrock, if you use a silk touch shovel, you can actually obtain that path block item. To be fair, in creative mode of Minecraft Java, you can also obtain path blocks, but there's literally no way inside of survival to get path blocks in Java Edition. Although it's kind of useless to have path blocks anyway in Minecraft, as you can always just right click the ground with a shovel to turn 
dirt or grass or any other sort of dirt-like item into a path. It is still kind of cool to have these items, and you'd expect to, you'd actually be able to pick up farmland with a shovel, but you're not able to, even though farmland is an item that you can get in Minecraft Java Edition's creative inventory, this one is not yet able to be picked up by the shovel. Scaffolding has a major amount of differences between Java and Bedrock editions of Minecraft. The first thing is the actual texture of the scaffolding item is sort of block shaped and bedrocked, whereas in Java we basically see the scaffolding item like an individual scaffolding with just the four legs and no bottom circle of bamboo there to support it. But as well as that, in Java scaffolding is instantly able to be broken, but in bedrock you cannot instantly break scaffolding, in fact it takes a little bit of time to break. Now scaffolding in Minecraft makes an amazing fuel, and although apparently this is going to change in an upcoming update, as of right now one piece of scaffolding can smelt six items inside of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. And even though that might not seem like a lot of items, something that's kind of crazy to think about is that that's 75% as many items as a piece of coal, meaning that more or less scaffolding is almost as good of a fuel as coal is. So it definitely makes sense why they'll be changing this, but it is still a pretty crazy difference. And inside of the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, the Fire Aspect Sword has been given abilities that are similar to what the Flame Bow has in Java and in Bedrock. If you right click on a piece of TNT with the Fire Aspect Sword, it will instantly ignite it, just as if you'd right clicked on it with let's say a piece of flint and steel. So that's a fairly cool functionality of the Fire Aspect Sword. But as well as that, another cool thing you can do with it is you can light candles. So just right click on some candles with a fire aspect sword and bedrock and you can light those really easily. If you have a lit campfire and then you unlight it with a shovel, you can right click on that campfire with your fire aspect sword as if it's just flint and steel and relight those. In fact, within Minecraft Bedrock Edition, a fire aspect sword is almost as good in flint and steel in basically every single way. And this is definitely a very cool feature about Minecraft Bedrock and I hope it's added to Java as well. As I really do like the ability to use these flame as well as fire aspect items, just like it logically makes sense. These swamps inside of Minecraft have always felt somewhat dead, but of course Minecraft 1.19 added a new variant of the swamps and frogs to the old swamp biome as well. But something that Bedrock has that makes its swamp stand out as being quite interesting is the fact that inside of it we can have giant mushrooms. So they can be the giant red mushrooms or they can also be the giant brown mushrooms. This generates very similarly to a dark forest forest, where you have throughout this biome certain red mushrooms and brown mushrooms that generate throughout the swamp. Although they are nowhere near as common as, let's say, the giant mushrooms of the dark forest, it's still really smart to have these mushrooms inside of the swamp, as the swamp has sort of a spooky vibe with things like witch huts and the sort of dark green grass. Having these giant mushrooms in the biome as well, really makes it seem a lot less like just a boring real life swamp, and more like a mystical swamp that contains giant mushrooms that grow among the trees. A major difference between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition is the Wither. The Wither boss is so difficult inside of Bedrock, and it's actually more difficult in multiple ways. So for starters, of course when we summon in the Wither, you'll notice it is moving around already as it summons in, which it cannot do inside of Java, it can only move once it has summoned all the way in. Also it does summon in with an explosion, but also when it dies this mob has an explosion. The Wither has a bunch of additional abilities, so for instance the first one being that it can move very very quickly, much quicker than the player, maybe the speed of the player with Elytra on, and it also consciously tries to avoid the player. The sky will turn sort of dark and dim when fighting the Wither, although this does happen in Java as well, and at a certain point during the fight the Wither will even summon in some Wither skeletons you have to defeat, and this Wither even has a ram ability where it can basically break a massive amount of blocks to destroying them, certainly making this so much more difficult than it is in Java. Now composters are not saved from differences between Bedrock and Java. For instance, a big difference is that the compost inside of the composter in Java has no hitbox to it, meaning that when the compost level is raised and you go in it, or even when you try going into it later, you won't go on top of it, you'll just sink down into the compost. However, in Bedrock, the compost does have a hitbox, so you're raised up within that composter there, going higher and higher as it composts more and more. Another big difference is that you can actually compost grass blocks inside a Bedrock Edition, which you definitely cannot do inside of Java. 
but in Bedrock you can use a bunch of grass blocks to somewhat ineffectively make compost. The recipe for the composter in Java Edition used to look like this, and the recipe in Bedrock Edition looks like this, and did look like that before, but now this is the recipe for both Bedrock Edition and Java Edition, which is kind of cool to see that the better recipe that was used on Bedrock is now on both versions. A very strange thing inside of Minecraft Bedrock Edition is the fact that the models of fence gates as well as walls are different in the inventory, but they're not different at all when they're actually placed down in the world. As you can see here, these models are basically the exact same between Bedrock and Java, and same with the fence gates when placed down. They still have that sort of familiar look with the two slots there, being able to be opened up almost like an old Wild West door. However, what's very strange, you can sort of see this in the corner of my screen, but the model of the fence gate there is not at all like how it's placed down. For whatever strange reason in Bedrock Edition, it's like that bottom piece of wood has moved up a bit. So there aren't those two holes in the fence gate there, there's just a pure fence gate like this. And it's funny how with both the walls and with the fences, there's these strange differences where we see the two pillars of the walls as if it's one thing, but when placed down, it still places as a singular pillar. It's like they're showing us what a wall would look like if you have two of them next to each other like this. Lily pads, even though sometimes thought of as a sort of useful item inside of Minecraft still have some very interesting differences and discrepancies between both versions. So for starters, the name of the lily pad in Minecraft Bedrock Edition is the Water Lily, although the actual item in your inventory is called a lily pad. The code of the game refers to it as a water lily. As well as that, inside of Minecraft Java Edition, you can of course place down lily pads to jump on top of like this, on top of any water you'd like, or even a waterlogged block. But in Bedrock, it's different because you can also place lily pads on top of ice. That's right, you can place them on top of a solid block, even something like a waterlogged block in bedrock as well, for instance on top of this seagrass. There's also a long-running bug that was fixed in Java a very long time ago, but is still in bedrock, where basically, you can place a lily pad inside of yourself, so I'm now stuck inside of that lily pad as you can see here. I can somewhat jump out, but it still sort of jumps around the player when you place it inside of them. You may or may not know the fact that in 1.14, the system of dies in Minecraft was somewhat changed. From being a system where there was a bunch of different blocks that you used to die things, including there not being black dye, brown dye, blue dye, or white dye, these were just dyed with bone meal, lapis lazuli, cocoa beans, and ink sacks. And so this was changed in that update, adding these die variants. But something that's very strange is even though in Java Edition those items can no longer be used as dyes, in Bedrock Edition you still can. So you can notice right here we're using these to dye this black, we're using these cocoa beans to dye this brown, and we're using this lapis to dye it blue. It's kind of strange that this recipe wasn't removed from Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and I have no idea why. As for instance, taking crushed up bones and directly applying them to glass doesn't really make sense to give you white stained glass. Having that step in between is definitely good, but inside of Minecraft Bedrock you can do that either way if you want. There are combinations of placing together items in Minecraft that don't seem to make sense, and ones that would make sense that you can't do. And some of these are in Java Edition, for instance not being able to place buttons on top of fences, and not being able to place buttons on the side of pistons, because once you press it, that button will be broken off. However, in Bedrock, you can do both of these things. So though you can place buttons on pistons in Java Edition, if you press them, they're popped off. And although this one still is if it's on the side of the piston that pushes forward, if the buttons are on this side, they don't pop off at all. Also, as an interesting fact, you'll notice that the actual model of the piston is different. Of sort of the neck of the piston, we have this wider section here that goes out one pixel, but as well as that, you can also place buttons on top of fence posts. And this does look entirely humorous, with these singular fence posts going around and the buttons on top of them that barely really fit on top. Parrots have some differences between both versions. The first one is that when the parrot's flying, it actually has a different animation to it. So for instance, you can see with this green parrot over here flying, its wings basically shakily warp between being in different positions instead of having a flowing animation. But as well as that, parrots inside of Bedrock Edition do not dismount off of your shoulders very easily. So if you run around, jump, shift, go up blocks, do all these different things, those parrots will still stay on your shoulders. And in Java, parrots do dance if they're on the ground around a jukebox, but in Bedrock they also dance if 
throw on your shoulders if a jukebox is playing. And I definitely like this functionality as these cute dancing parrots can be enjoyed whether they're on their shoulders or whether they're on the ground. Now unfortunately if you do move they'll basically stop dancing, but you can sort of get them to dance again if you're near the jukebox. And I like the ability for the parrot to stay on your shoulders really easily, as of course I found the most annoying thing in Java Edition is the fact that the parrots fall off so easily. One of the first differences I recognized between Bedrock and Java is side texture rotating. I can kind of show you what I mean by that. If you look at all these grass blocks on the top there, the texture is always the same. We have that one rock in the corner, we have this dark area in the center, and you can notice that's the same on every grass block. And more or less, the side texture of these blocks is randomly rotated to any direction. This is much easier to see in something like, let's say, glowstone, where we can see here all these textures don't even line up. For instance, on the edge here, this bit of glowstone there is sort of pinched off. We get these strange texture lines like there. This is also present in obsidian. As in Java Edition Obsidian, all Obsidian looks like this on the texture, but in Bedrock all these sides are rotated randomly. This is also like this for Crying Obsidian, although this may be a minor difference for some. Personally, I like having all the textures be the same dimensions on the side. Charged Creepers are much more useful and powerful in Bedrock than they are in Java, and I'll show you why. In Java Edition, if we had a mob next to the creeper when the charged creeper exploded and it kills it, it will drop its head, and that does happen in Bedrock Edition as well. But in Java, if we had, let's say, a charged creeper and a whole bunch of other mobs around it, so for instance, this charged creeper here that's completely surrounded in skeletons, and the charged creeper were to explode, well, only one of those skeletons would drop their skulls, but not in Bedrock Edition. Every single one of these skeletons will drop their skulls. And this really does change two things fundamentally about Minecraft. The first one is the fact that it makes skulls themselves much, much easier to get. The second one means once you've done one or two nights of charged creeper, for hunting, you can just collect the massive amount of skulls that you've gained with no need for going back again to get more. Here if we were to of course effectively trap a very large number of creepers, we could get so many different skulls from them it's crazy. Salmon inside of Minecraft Bedrock Edition are really cool in the way that they work because they can have massive size variation. So you can find incredibly tiny little baby looking salmon like this one here, but still upon hitting this very tiny little salmon you get a full sized salmon item, but the salmon can also generate to be incredibly large, and when you hit that salmon you also get a salmon item from it. And you can see over here a really good picture of the massive size variation we have in between here, from an incredibly tiny little minnow salmon to a massive adult salmon. This really is a much more realistic way of showing fish, as no two fish are the exact same size. In Minecraft Java, you will get a piece of bone meal from a fish, but in Bedrock you can sometimes get just a straight up bone from a fish. And so it's kind of cool that in Bedrock we have this much more realistically shown salmon by giving us an actual bone from the fish, but as well as that making them have so much variation from a tiny little fish to a massive salmon. Cold biomes in Bedrock have a really unique feature to them, and that is when it's snowing, they actually change. So let's take a look at these tree leaves. You may notice already their color is starting to change. In fact, it changes progressively. You may notice it's getting lighter and lighter. As we keep looking at it, it'll sort of change one tick upwards in terms of brightness. As we look around this forest, you can sort of see it happen right there. Let's look at this very closely and watch it happen in real time right about now, and you you can see that just changed to be a bit brighter. And honestly, this is one of the most magical things in Minecraft Bedrock, is the fact that trees and snowy biomes actually become covered in snow. And you can notice that's becoming brighter and brighter. Just to visualize this getting fully covered in snow, this really does transform the taiga forest into a wintry wonderland, as well as that actually the snow layers can go more than one snow layer tall, so for instance two of them like that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video about 20 differences between Minecraft Java and Bedrock Edition. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to see more. Comment down below if you play Bedrock Edition or Java Edition, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.